Welcome back, Kim241 guys. We've got another uh, video answer key here and leading up to our second exam. We're dealing with organometallics and this homework deals specifically with the carbonyl ligand and some of its reactions and clusters and some organometallic uh, complex electron counting and oxidation state determination. So we'll dive right in. This first one I, I think is pretty much right for your notes so I won't spend a whole lot of time on it. Uh, you're trying to uh, find a way to synthesize this um, di-iron carbonyl complex and so you can do this a couple different ways and the first is direct right and direct from your notes you'll recall that you just simply take some metal so in this case we've got the iron right and that iron is going to be in a solid form and you're going to react it with some direct um, uh, gas exposure and so we'll take carbonyl the carbon monoxide uh, starting material that will form the carbonyl ligand and we're going to react those together to get our product in this case the product is this di-iron um, we've got this the nine carbonyls here and that's in a solid form as well so balancing is quite trivial you know you need two irons so we put two irons there you need two uh, carbon oxides and I mean sorry two, nine carbon oxides you get nine carbon oxides there straightforward really easy the second one's a little bit more difficult but is typically more along the lines of how these complexes are actually formed or clusters and so in this case we're going to take um, some starting material in this case iron you could pick a bunch of different ones and you guys were really creative uh, you could take some oxide you could take some nitrate some sulfate some carbonate I am kind of old-fashioned I like to just take something really simple like the chloride which is readily available I took the iron 3 chloride which is a solid we have to add that to a sacrificial uh, metal that we're gonna um, oxidize right we're gonna reduce this iron from 3 plus to the 0 and so uh, we need something we can oxidize. I'm just going to go ahead and pick aluminum because that's the example I used in class. And then finally, once again, you need some carbon monoxide and you need the nine um, carbon monoxide gas uh, units that we had before. Um, take this all together. You're going to end up getting your iron, your di-iron carbonyl, right? So we have this here and that's going to be a solid. And again, we have to oxidize that aluminum. In this case, we'll go to the aluminum three and get the nice chloride. So now we look here and we say, okay, well, we need two irons. Uh, so we need to put two in front of here, which means then that we're going to have six chlorides. So we better have two over here, which means now we need two aluminums, which means we bounce back over here. Check our carbonyl. Our carbon monoxide is nine, goes to nine carbonyls. Looks pretty good there. So again, the trick here is right that we're going from a, a three plus uh, iron to a um, zero oxidation state, and we're going from a zero aluminum to an aluminum three plus. So that's a redox reaction. Pretty pretty simple there. Just like in the notes. Okay. This one deals with the um, carbonyl cluster complexes that we talked about at the end of class when we discussed carbonyls. And so here we're going to try to think about how do we explore what the four metals here, the four metals here, and the five metals here, what geometry do they develop? And then what what does that um, look like before it gets decorated by the carbonyl? So we're really focusing on the metal cage work framework geometry. And so here we say, okay, the first thing we need to do is determine the number of electrons in the complex and so here or in the cluster I'm gonna say in this case we've got uh, iridium right if we look at iridium on the periodic table it's in the the cobalt family right so that's gonna be um, four metals times what nine electrons and we're gonna add that to the ligand electrons so you have 12 carbonyls each of those brings two electrons right so we've got what um, this total I think I get what 60 electrons for that cluster and we can set that equal to our formula, right? So 60 equals um, the number of metals, right? Times 18 from our 18 electron rule minus two times the number of metal metal bonds. And that's gonna be really important. Determining the number of metal metal bonds is really important. So you can calculate this out and I think I get something on the order of six metal metal bonds, right? There's 12 electrons divided by two gives you that. And if you think about it, six metal metal bonds, well, there's only one geometry that matches up to that. And I draw it kind of like this. I'm going to put um, this one out here. You know, I'm just drawing my, my atoms, so to speak. I'm going to draw another one over here, another one over there. I've got four. Put that one here. Um, maybe make that there. Boom, boom, boom. And then back behind here. So this looks like a tetrahedron. And we can check it, right? There are six bonds, so there's one, two, three, 
four, five, and then the one behind there connecting those two at the bottom, that's a tetrahedron. So there we go. That works out pretty well. This next one's done in a exact, I mean, just the same way, manner. Uh, here we've got four manganese, right? Manganese is actually in uh, column seven. So we go four, again, there are four metals times seven valence. Plus, in this case, we've got 16 carbonyls times two. And here's the kicker, you gotta be careful. There's a negative two charge on that whole thing. So we need to consider those two, add those together. And in this case, I get 60, well, pen just jumped there, sorry guys. Um, get 62 down here, right? 62 electrons. We can uh, do the same formula here. 62 equals number of metals, in this case, still four times 18 minus two times the number of metal metal bonds. And when you solve this, I end up getting five metal metal bonds. And um, unlike the tetrahedron, um, you know, we, where we had six, right? We had six metal metal bonds in the tetrahedron. We don't have that many. So in this case, we're gonna form a different geometry. And the different geometry here is a butterfly. And that's where you can end up having uh, two in, kind of draw this like that, maybe one like that, uh, one like that, and then one like that. So in essence, you've got what? One, two, three, four, five metal metal bonds, and we call that again the butterfly. There we go. And this last one, you gotta be careful, there are five metals here. So this is ruthenium, and ruthenium is in the iron column, right? The iron family, so we go five times and if you look at iron, right, that's eight. It's in the same family, same number of valence electrons, so five times eight. In this case, we've got, um, again, uh, 16 carbonyls times two electrons each, and then again, it's a dianion, so we add those two electrons, and I think I get um, 74 electrons here. You can do the same formula, just being careful that here you have a different number of metals, right? You have five times 18 minus two, times the number of metal metal bonds. And this one I end up getting, um, what did I get? I got eight metal metal bonds. And so we've got to think about what the geometry looks like. And since there's five, you might be tempted to say it's trigonal by pyramidal, but it's not the case. And so why is that? And so I'll try to draw the framework here as the best I can. I'm gonna go ahead and draw the alternative. And that alternative is a square pyramid. And so we can have the one up at the top, and then one, two coming back down here, and then each of these is in a base that's gonna connect. This is a terrible drawing, I apologize. Uh, but anyway, we got the one up here at the top, right? And then a square base, so one, two, three, four in the base, one, two, three, four coming up to this one at the top, and so that is eight, and this would be simply a square pyramid. Really, really easy. Okay, this bottom question I think uh, gave a lot of you some trouble and I really want to urge you to go back to your notes and revisit the ligands that you should be thinking about for this upcoming exam and how we count uh, the charges and how we count the oxidation state. And I'm gonna go through just the way I do it. If you find another way that works for you, that's good. That Your book has two ways. I prefer to use the ionic method, but it's totally up to you. First thing I do is I go around the metal and I assign um, whether each ligand is going to be neutral or anionic or cationic. And so this carbonyl by now, I hope you know it is a um, neutral ligand, same thing here. Um, and then the CP ring up here, that's really important. That is a negative. And then here you have an NO ligand, right? And remember, this is in linear form. So that means whenever you find NO in the linear form, it is going to be a cation. And that's really important. So in this case, if you think about it, this overall charge, or the whole charge of this complex is zero because there's no brackets, right? And so if that's the case, then the negative charge and the positive charge here cancel each other out, and the chromium has a zero oxidation state. That's pretty simple. So now we need to think about it. So chromium in zero oxidation state, the chromium will bring six electrons. The CP ligand brings six, right? That's really important you know that. NO2, I mean NO, CO, and CO all bring two, so six more. That means you end up with 18 for the complex, and that's really important. All right, let's go to this next one. Here we've got, um, I think we've got a negative CP. We've got a negative CP. 
we've got a negative alkyl, we've got a negative hydride, and here we have a bent NO. A bent NO is negative, whereas a linear is positive. And overall, this complex has a negative charge, which means we have five anions. That means that zirconium better be a plus four to give you um, one, two, three, four that are canceled with one remaining, bringing that into a negative. So if you look at zirconium, zirconium with four electrons removed has zero um, electrons. And then each CP brings you six, so I'll write those separately. And then you have one, two, three ligands that bring you two electrons each, and that gives you a total of 18. So four plus zirconium, 18 electrons for that. If you come to this one on the bottom, this one right here, this ligand, this may be a little confusing. If you don't like to draw it this way, one way that you could draw it instead would be to draw it as the pi allele, right, where you have, um, you know, you've got your negative um, end over here forming a bond there. This is bidentate, but a lot of people like to draw it like that. Remember, that's the pi allele. You, have need, you need to know that. And here we can say, okay, well, I've got a chloride or chloro ligand, a cyano ligand, and a carbonyl. Here I've got one, two, three that are anionic, right? This side of the pi allele is negative. Chloro is negative, cyano is negative. If this whole thing is negative, that means ruthenium then has to be a two plus. If you look on your periodic table, you'll find ruthenium in the iron family. Eight minus two is six electrons from the metal. Um, the pi allele brings one, two, three, four, right? That gives us 10. And then one, two, three monodentate ligands gives you two each, which would be six again, which gives you very easily uh, 16 electrons. And the last one, here we just have um, you got a negative hydride, a negative hydride, a negative alkyl, and two neutral um, alkenes, or olefin ligands, however you want to call those, right? They're both neutral. Um, they're just connected. One of the hydrogens has been popped off, and I connected them, so nothing too fancy there, but these are both neutral, and the overall charge is negative one. That means this palladium is going to be a plus two, right? If you look for palladium on the periodic table, it's in the nickel family. It's got 10 electrons minus two is going to be eight from the metal. Um, you're going to have one, two, three, four, five times two is 10 electrons from all five of those ligands, and then that gives you an 18 electron complex, right? Pretty, pretty simple, not too difficult there. And so two plus for palladium, and you're all done. So again, I think some of you struggled with this. I hope you can, you know, make sure to go back and make flashcards or whatever you got to do, but you got to know these extra nine or ten ligands for this next exam and add them to the library that we've had before. So I hope this is helpful and I'd be happy to answer questions in class or in lab or whenever you can get a hold of me, come see me. We can talk about it in my office, whatever you want to do, but you got to get these down because uh, we're going to get to catalysis where doing these kinds of electron counts is just very pivotal because you can't do catalytic cycles unless you can think about the oxidation states and the charge that you find on these metal complexes.